<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I know I had to convince you a little bit about this interview. <laughs> That's right. You were a little bit nervous and I had I, to convince uh, you that... I'm still nervous. Well, okay, tell me what you're nervous are you about. Are Tell No, but why, why are you nervous? No, it's my first. Your first on yeah, camera? On camera. Oh, don't, I've read all your stuff. I'm like, she, she says great things. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. I'll be gentle. So, yes. Thank okay. you, thank you, thank you so much. Let's start with, why don't you introduce yourself, tell me who you are and what it is you do. Okay, so I'm Jara, Jara Busonyang. I'm the founder of Buswari. So Buswari is a brand of leather handbags made in Senegal by Africans, by artisans. So tell me about why handbags? I always wanted to be in fashion. So, but I always wanted to have a clothing line. But the more we go, I'm like, clothing is complicated. You have to have sizes. And also having a facility in Africa maybe is not, was not as easy as handbags. So one year I went on vacation and I read about the leather industry in Africa, which, is, which needs like development. I also have my mom who had a nice phone case that was like in leather that was made by artisan. It was really well made. So I'm like, okay, why not handbags? And I start looking into it, and I found out that they have, they need help, like artisans over there. Uh, they don't have the right equipment. Uh, they are lacking uh, training, maybe. And I'm like, okay, instead of just doing a closing line, uh, I, it's, need, it's better to have something that contributes also uh, in the development of, of uh, Senegal of Africa. So you decide on handbags. Had, did you have any background in making handbags? Did no. you know where to start to make a handbag? No. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get started? What was step one for you? Step one was finding the designs. What I wanted to do also was to tell a story. Because when I came to Canada, I came to Canada in 2009, uh, I noticed that the only uh, story you heard from Africa is about um, like war, disease, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so this is good. Uh, I will also tell the story of Africa because in Africa we always had a story of like uh, luxury. Luxury also was born, I think, in, in Egypt. So I will tell the story at the same time. So the first thing was to design the handbags. I wanted to tap into the tradition, and most of the handbags are inspired by Africa, Africa, like a traditional African handbags, like the Tuareg boots or the Nafa, uh, the Kabos weekender. Everything is inspired by Africa. So you decide you're going to make handbags. You start on that process. Was it an easy process? Like, how did you go mm, from no. having the idea to actually having a handbag? It wasn't an easy process. It still isn't. <laughs> so we have to source the leather. Uh, in Senegal, we don't have uh, tanneries uh, that can produce leather, uh, like good quality leather. So we have to buy from Italy, or you can, I, I buy also from, uh, from Senegal. So, and then we don't have like, great technology like we have maybe in Italy where everything is computerized. No, you have to draw uh, like a scratch on, on paper and then work with the artisans to have the finished product. And how do you come up with the designs? Because I've seen that your handbags are gorgeous. How do you come up with the designs? I guess that it's inspired by Africa. So like for example, the Nafa handbags. That's the my design, favorite. I want the red one. <laughs> the red one. <laughs> we already have the design. What we did is we just modernize it, so make it more functional, so then the modern woman can carry it, can put things on it, because the original one is flat, so you can put anything in there. So we, we made like some sides, I don't know how to say that, sorry. <laughs> and then it's more functional, more modern for the, the, the modern Senegalese woman or any, any, any woman in the world. And how do you come up with the names? I love the names. 
So the name is a contraction between my name, my middle name, Busso, mm -hmm. and Basari. The word Basari, it stands for Basari people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tribe in, uh, in West Africa. And why that particular tribe? Because they are fascinating. I like them. Uh, they are they're still traditional. They didn't bend uh, on anything. They still living uh, like the traditional way, uh, and there are not so many anymore. I actually looked it up, and and yeah. I think on the internet it said anywhere between ten thousand and thirty thousand. So there's yes. not a lot. Not of a them. lot. Not a lot. Wow. So I'm like, that's a good thing to remember. Maybe in, down the road in the future. Let's talk about so Senegal. You're from okay. Senegal. Yes. What was it like growing up in Senegal? Well, it was nice. Yeah. I loved growing up in Senegal. I had many opportunities. I went to school. It was fun growing up in the city. Sometimes people ask me if I came from the village. I didn't. <laughs> so, but it was nice. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. What's your favorite memory about your childhood and growing up in Senegal? My favorite... Uh, is when I was going to uh, uh, like my grandma's place. So over there we were able to do everything. Like <laughs> yes, grandmother, so she do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my one of my favorite memories. Yeah. And then how did you go? So you grew up in Senegal, you mm -hmm. did high school in Senegal, and then I know at some point you moved to, to France. Yes, so I, I went to France to, to study. So I studied English first and then I, I, I always wanted to be Because of course you, you go to France to study to English. Study English. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gone to Canada. <laughs> but uh, no, so I went to France and study English and then I did uh, fashion management and luxury management. And why that, when you were a child, like what did you want to be when you grew up? A uh, stylist. Oh, so Always. you knew from a very young age? I knew age. from the very young age, yes. what, what was it about being a stylist that you liked? I don't know. I was seeing my mom uh, wearing like nice clothes, always nice with makeup, you know, the African mom. So I'm like, I want to do that. And I was like watching TV, all these like uh, runway shows. So I, I, don't, I don't like uh, anything... Uh, like no fame or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. just the creativity that is involved in making products for people to wear. And what was your time in, in France like? It's a very cosmopolitan city. It's a very stylish city. Uh, yes, Did I you was enjoy in it? Paris. Uh, yes. So I lived in Bordeaux for one year, south of France, and then I moved to Paris. And I loved Paris. Paris is the fashion capital. So it was very lot of creativity, a uh, lot of good food. <laughs> so I, I loved Paris. I had a good, a really good time there. And then you made the transition from Paris to mm -hmm. Canada. When, when did that happen for you? In 2009. And what brought you to Canada? So I wanted to explore something else, um, like learn English as well because I never had the opportunity to go after, after I had a bachelor. I have a bachelor in English. I never had the opportunity to go to uh, the States or England. After that, so I'm like, okay, that's a good opportunity and let's go there. And so when you came to Canada, did you start right away with the business or what did you do when no, you came to Canada? No, when I came to Canada, I was in Montreal for three months and then everybody was saying, okay, the fashion capital in, in, in Canada is Toronto. So I'm like, okay, let's go move to Toronto. Uh, but uh, it took me like two, three years. I always, when I first came, I always knew that I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have like a, a business. Uh, so it took me like two, three years to always to know what I was going to do, because at the beginning, like I said, I wasn't wanted a closing line. Uh, then I'm like, okay, uh, my original idea was to go to a other country to produce, but when I was going back home, I'm like, I have to do something. I have to contribute, and then I decided to move the production, like start the production, 
in Senegal, which took me like delayed the process a little bit because now I had to document myself. I have to learn how it works in Senegal. It was it difficult? So as you say, you, you obviously are not living in Senegal. You mm -hmm. go back to Senegal. Yeah. Was it difficult to find the artisans who no, are going to know? No, you have many artisans over there. So it's difficult to find one serious mm -hmm. when you can work with uh, for a long time. So I was lucky. Uh, I found one. I have ma found many now uh, that are very good, very serious, and then I can I can work with. So the design starts with you. So do you sketch it out? How does it work from you having the idea to you translating that for the artisans to start to make that hand? I sketch it out. Uh, I sketch all the time whenever I am. So, and then I work with the artisan. We have to see also because sketch is very difficult. Like I said, we don't have like the really high techniques uh, in Senegal. So I can sketch something and then they will tell me, no, uh, we can't do that. Uh, like for example, the handle, I have to negotiate a lot because at the, f the first time they told me, oh no, we cannot do that. It's too complicated. And then he went and I guess make his own, uh, you know, investigations. And then he called me and come back. Actually, we can. Come, come, we'll see. And then we went and now they, they are able to do it. And that's one of the major uh, brand feature. So I'm really happy of that. But you have to work a lot with them to see what is possible with the minimum that we have. What is possible to do, what is possible to like not what, what is impossible to do. And you talked about brand feature. Now, one of the things that's really striking about your brand is your logo, which yes. I absolutely love. How did you come up with your logo? So the logo is nothing f fancy, no. I would say. It's beautiful. It's, <laughs> it's the head gear, if you can say, of the Basari people. Okay. So when they do their initiation feast, the men, they have like a, a nice, very nice head here in, in wood. And the woman, they have like head, very nice head, a, a head style. So we mixed both of them. And then that's how we end up with the logo. Now back to Senegal and your work. So you work with the artisans. I'd mm -hmm. imagine that in terms of controlling, how do you control the quality? Because you're obviously, you're a luxury brand, you, mm -hmm. so there's a lot riding on reputation. Yeah. How do you control the quality of what comes out of, of the artisans? So the quality, every bag is checked. By We have a company, uh, NAS7, uh, who is checking, uh, like the person, the consultant is checking every bag. So when they came here too, when they come here in Canada, I also check them. Yeah. And, and what, what's a typical time? So let's say for the NAF, which is, again, my personal favorite. <laughs> how, do, what, how long does it take for an artisan to make? The, are all of the, well, the bags handmade? Yes, they yeah. are handmade. It's one or two days. Wow. Yeah. So every bag is handmade. Yes. There's no yes. machine. There's no factory well, that they're there, going to. I mean, no, the there elements is a machine. Of it, yes. right. yeah. but, so, but in terms of there, there's an artisan who's touching who's pretty much who's everything. Who's cutting who them cuts by hand. It. Yes, and then assemble them and then we run them through a machine at some point. But most of the details are made, that are handmade. Wow. And in terms of WIC, people can, can buy them. Do you ship all over the world? Yes. Yes, I ship all over the world. So the website is uh, buswari.com and then we ship all over the world by Canada Post or DHL. And how have you been able to, so if you're shipping all over the world, that must cost a lot. It costs a lot. It <laughs> costs a lot. <laughs> so that's actually and back here. Yeah. to Europe, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So especially the big bags. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to make smaller bags that can ship like very more easily. But shipping to uh, shipping from Canada to Europe it costs a lot, and, uh, and then to the states. But uh, yeah. mostly Europe was a shock at the big. Let's talk. Actually, speaking about money, mm -hmm. let's talk about how you funded starting the company. How did mm -hmm. you get the money to to get started with your first production? My savings. So I came here. I worked a lot. Uh, and I, I'm saving, I'm still working, and I'm, 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 I, I saved enough money to start the business. And where do you see, or what's your 
big vision for where do you want the company to go? Well, I want everybody to heard about uh, African stories. So I want, I want it to be big, uh, as big as it can be. Uh, so we're looking to investment. Uh, we will try to make it like as, uh, as big as it can be. And when you started the company, like what was your, like what was the most challenging part of starting? A <sighs> lot of stress. I mean, starting a company is not easy. You start and you think it will be easy, or oh, then no, no. So you have a lot of obstacles. Um, so working with people, working with artisans, uh, shipping, and the only thing is when you have to do everything by yourself at the beginning, uh, at the end you don't really know where to, <laughs> where to go and where to turn your head from. So, yes. So what's, been the, say, what's been the biggest thing that surprised you about this entrepreneurial journey? What's been your biggest surprise or your biggest learning from this journey? Maybe you, you're never ready. Because I was waiting all the time. I, have, I waited a long time. But then at some point, I'm like, OK, you know what? Just do it. Just start. Uh, you are never ready. You're never ready for this. So what you just need to do is just start and see how it goes and where it will take you. Is where you are now where you thought you would be? Uh, no. Uh, I'm, I, I was actually surprised of, of all this attention on the brand. I didn't think I would be that far at this stage. Uh, but good, it's good. Uh, so we need to um, like do more, um, I don't know how to say it, like more settings, uh, adjusting, because you have to adjust. Um, so, but, um, yeah, that's good. So you, you talked about design, you know, that oh, part of your challenge, like the weekender bag is realizing that a bag of that size, while it's, it's beautiful, is very hard to, to ship because of the cost of shipping. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other adjustments that you've had to make just learning based on you being in the market? Having more products line, uh, like maybe cheaper products also to have to reach everybody. Uh, so that's what I, what I have learned. And telling more, the, because people want to know where it is made, want to know the story. Uh, they are very interested. Um, I think people now don't just want to buy a product, uh, especially unless it's something that like food or, you know, they want to have like a connection uh, with the brand. So it's, it's good to, to tell a story and then to tell it well, because... What would you say, so if you had to tell me what the brand story is of Puswari, what is the brand story? So it's made in Senegal uh, and uh, inspired by Africa, made in Africa by artisans and telling African stories. Uh, I don't know if anybody will be interested in hearing African stories. I will say for somebody who wants to travel, somebody who wants to learn other cultures, somebody who is conscious, uh, who care, uh, cares about where uh, something like when, what he's using is made, um, and a stylish also, stylish person. One of the things that uh, about the brand is that it is a luxury brand, mm -hmm. so the price points are a little bit higher mm -hmm. than you know your average. You well, know, I would not sure. say a luxury brand. No, because when I wanted to start the business, I want to I wanted to have a good product. Okay, it's not as high as another brand like a, a, a luxury brand. Right. Uh, when you have a good product, it comes with the cost, so that's why the price is like like this mm -hmm. uh, so what we wanted is just a good quality of handbag uh, that will last because you can buy one and then it just lasts for one month mm -hmm. no i want to guarantee that um, 
our bags will last for, I will not say a lifetime, but <laughs> close to it. <laughs> a long time. So, a long time. Mm. <laughs> so that was the main goal. And uh, the perception as luxury, uh, luxury is not just price point. Um, you have luxury brands that are not really luxury. So I think just good quality of product uh, with a reasonable price. What would you say is the next step that you want to take? Because I know you said that your vision for the brand is that you'd like for pretty much it to be available everywhere, for mm -hmm. everybody to have one. Mm -hmm. But in the short term, in the next one year, in the next two years, yeah. what's your vision for the brand? So in the short term is uh, developing the brand more in Canada, uh, developing it also um, in, Sen in Africa. Uh, I always wanted to have, because you have a lot of brands, uh, they always want to start with like uh, somewhere else. But uh, you have the home, home, home country that is also like uh, you need to reach that first before you, have, you export and go somewhere else. So that's the, the main goal. And do you see yourself ever expanding the brand outside of Senegal or, 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 yeah. do, or is, it, is it very important to, to keep the brand in Senegal? Like producing? M producing and also just the inspiration. Uh, and yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Producing, uh, we're thinking about other, because Senegal is good, but like quantities, uh, if you want us to scale, we'll have to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will prefer to be in Africa. Uh, that was the main, main, main uh, objective. So it will hopefully... Why, why is that important for you? Because I would imagine you could go to uh, any, many other many countries. Other I won't name any names. Know, it, many other countries where you could easy. potentially produce for cheaper. And yeah. you know, So w why is Africa so important If to you? everybody does that everybody goes to the country africa will never have a chance so i think that it's good to it's difficult uh it's very it's more expensive uh, but uh we need to try we need to do our best uh, we need to stay there and produce there uh, as much as much as we can um, yeah, and then I will be inspired by also other country like uh, other countries like uh, the second collection was inspired by uh, Baule people. Uh, it's more mostly uh, Ivory Coast and um, Ghana. So I would love to go be inspired by Ethiopia, South Africa, like Morocco. You have so many cultures so many like inspiration uh, in, in Africa, so it's endless. Let's talk about you and what inspires you. So not related to the brand, but just you as, as, as Diara. What is, where does your inspiration come from to do what you're doing? I looked up to my grandmother, who was a very strong woman. Uh, and I looked up to uh, many, many, uh, many people. Um, but what is most important for me is you, you don't have, I don't look up to like famous people. Uh, you, you have to be uh, down, um, like little things inspire me, like uh, nice things, nice people. Uh, I think that uh, you, to succeed you don't have to be, uh, you have to contribute you should have a meaning uh, so yeah so that's what inspired me like What's meaning the, what is meaning for you right now what 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 for you is meaning meaning is uh, contributing to something it's like uh, it's just not living your life and <laughs> And that, that's like contributing to anything. I mean, we all contribute to something. Uh, but um, meaning is um, achieving what you want to do and uh, trying to um, change things. Um, yeah. What are you most proud of 
that you've achieved so far? The, the brand. <laughs> I'm most proud of the brand because when I started, I wasn't expecting uh, to have like nice visuals, uh, like nice story, but it didn't it didn't happen in uh, in like uh, one or two years. You have to be. Uh, it took time. It took a lot of years. But uh, at the end, seeing like how it how it is, and that people are interested and people like it, so uh, I'm proud. I'm proud of it. And I hope should. it will continue. <laughs> you should be very proud of it. You yeah. should be very proud. What's the greatest lesson that you've learned so far? So I think uh, patience is the most important like, uh, lesson that you, have, you, you could learn in, in business. So you talked about it taking time, talk about patience. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I haven't asked you yet is for you to kind of take us on that journey. When, what year did you have the idea for the brand? And then when was the first year that you actually had a bag that you sold to a customer? Well, the idea of the brand was, uh, long time ago. Even when I was going to school, I was going to school in my mind to do something. Uh, I wasn't going to school, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sit there and work for anybody, like, on the long term. Uh, and and so, why was that? Like, where, did you have people in your family that were entrepreneurs? Like, why did you want to be? We didn't have a lot of entrepreneurs no. in the family, no. But you just knew you wanted to have yes. your own business? Yes. So I um, don't really, like my dad was a consultant, but uh, not really an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, so I always wanted to have that. Uh, when I came to Canada also, I was like, okay, I will work, and then in maybe two, three years, um, I will start something on the side. And, and uh, I came to Canada in 2009. The first bag, the first bus bag, I think it was 2012. So I went, uh, I went on, on, on vacation, and then we did the orange bag that I had. And then when I came, one friend was interested. He was like, OK, can I have this one? So I made one for him uh, with no logo, nothing. Uh, he waited for three months because I'm like, OK, it's going to be made in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to mail it. I'm going to have to wait until someone comes, go on vacation, you know how it works. So it's like, no problem. So, and then uh, and I thought it was an orange bag. So I can say that that's the first Buswari bag. And then from there, like, how did you then get the momentum to set up? Because you have beautiful imagery, beautiful branding, your branding mm -hmm. is just very beautiful. How did you come up with all the branding and the visuals for the brand? So the branding, uh, I work on the logo, I work on the name. So Spade Design, uh, Joel, who uh, I hired and then we did, the, we work on the logo and the, and the name. Uh, so when I, when I do all, everything on vacation, when I go on vacation, so the first day when I went, I had three weeks to uh, do the photos. So we did the bags, the prototypes, and then uh, we just hire uh, models. And then I had a good photographer. I love the photographer. Uh, his name is Claymore. So um, I hope we're going to continue to work together. Uh, a nice makeup artist as well, and the model was fantastic so we did a good job and you've had some fantastic coverage for the brand you've been in Vogue you've been in Elle magazine you've been in Glamour yeah. how did that all come about and and tell me how you reacted the first time you knew your bag was in Vogue magazine <laughs> well it was <laughs> fancy I think the first magazine that contacted me was Glamour and then when you are featured on one, it's uh, just, um, you know, other magazines are contacting you. So that was great, actually. Uh, and it happens like maybe six months after we, we launch. Wow. So that was, um, that's, that's great. So let's talk about back to you. So that you have a job. So mm -hmm. what do you do in your regular day job? So I'm working in a non-for-profit organization. So that's a busy job. 
Then you yes. also have this side, which yes. the entrepreneur side, yes. which you're running a business. How do you relax and what do you do I for don't. fun? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I do. I have friends. I have a lot of friends. Uh, I relax uh, the week, during the weekend. Uh, sometimes not, but uh, you have to put a lot of work on the business. Uh, so in the winter, I was doing like shows. Um, I did a trade show. Uh, I did a pop-up show last summer. I did one in, uh, I think it was April. So I'm trying to do a lot of pop-ups. And uh, like I said, it's not easy. And you don't have really much time to relax. What advice would you give to someone who's watching this, who has an idea for a business, and is thinking, well, what's, what advice would you give to someone? Take your time, uh, don't be in a hurry. Uh, you have to take risk, but it has to be calculated risk. Um, so save money, uh, bootstrap first, uh, because investor, they will not invest in you with, with like nothing. Uh, so, and, uh, and start. That's the most important part. You just have to be confident, believe in yourself, and start the business. What's the impact that you want to have in the world? Me? Oh, I don't want to have any impact. <laughs> I think I'm not like too uh, self-centered or anything else. Oh, but it maybe not you personally, but what do you want your brand? What's the impact you want your brand to have in the world? Yeah, so the brand, I, like I said, I want the, everybody to hear about, uh, like, African stories. Uh, it's good. Italians, they have a, a nice, a very good luxury uh, heritage. Uh, Africa, we have heritage. We have a good one, and in any any industries, any kind of uh, like uh, we have so many stories to tell. Uh, and uh, I find it sad to be just uh, put in a box uh, anywhere in the world, in Canada or anywhere in the world. Um, so we need to start um, telling the story. We need to start having brands. That uh, can be can uh, that are marketable, that are competitive, uh, mostly, um, and yeah. So hope we'll get that impact. And what are you afraid of? A lot of things. <laughs> I was afraid of the interview. <laughs> I know. I, I had to. Do, I had to do some work on you to convince you to do. It. But the, the, part of why I wanted to, I so wanted to do this interview with you, was for exactly the reason that you just said: is that to to, to share yes. about the brand mm -hmm. and the the message, the narrative that you're trying to put out in the uh -huh. world to tell a different story about Africa. So, are you still scared of the interview? Yes. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> You have to, I mean, I will have to do it at some point. That's what I say. So I choose to be an entrepreneur. So I have to assume my decision. Uh, and also, it's good to be, you know, pushed a little bit sometimes. So I'm okay. I'm happy to have been of service to push you <laughs> a little you. bit. <laughs> but what, what else are you afraid of? Other than being afraid of me, what else are you afraid of? <laughs> Can I say it will be funny? Everybody will know. <laughs> Uh, my biggest fear is cockroaches. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I mean, I laugh, and the reason I laugh is because my daughter, I think that is her, that's her nightmare, is cockroaches. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> of all so the things. I can say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, but in life, are you, are you, is there, do you have any fears about anything in life? Uh, well, life is complicated, but it's worth living. We have to live our life, and then we have to take it as it is. Uh, I think we are lucky enough to be here, so some people are not lucky, uh, but uh, we just have to take it as it is and take, have the most of it. 
And what are you most grateful for right now? Uh, my life. I have health. I'm healthy. Uh, touch wood. Uh, I'm doing uh, the things I love. Uh, so I'm grateful. And what do you say, talk about you doing the things you love. What do you love most about yourself? Don't know, I don't really want to talk about myself, but... <laughs> but you're so important to I the say, brand. <laughs> you yes, are. Yeah, I yeah. say maybe my generosity. I say. That's something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. That is something to be proud yeah. of, for you to own that. Yes. That you're a generous person. Mm -hmm. You are a generous person. Everything I've said, I have to tell this story, okay? No. If you don't mind me sharing it. So I was scheduling with you and we're communicating about when are we going to do it or what time are we going to do it. And I get this message from you which says, could you tell me of the people who are coming if anyone has any allergies? <laughs> and I really was confused for a second. I was like, any allergies? Like, what is she asking? Yeah. So I read back and I said, like, what do you mean? And you're like, well, I'd like to make some food for her. <laughs> I'd rather Senegal, I knew you were a generous in person. In Senegal, mm -hmm. the first collection was called Teranga. Mm -hmm. So Teranga means hospitality. In Senegal, you cannot go to someone's house without drinking anything or eating anything. So, <laughs> so we'll make sure before we leave, we drink and we yes, eat. <laughs> we have to, no choice. And what's your big plan for yourself for the future? So for the future is uh, developing the brand. I uh, have other personal plans too, but uh, mostly it's um, developing the brand, uh, trying to uh, um, have like it successful. And then also why not developing more brands? Uh, I think we need that. Um, we'll see. It's been a joy. It's been Dear, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you that you, you survived. <laughs>